Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to the art studio. Today we're focused on lens reviews with micro four thirds lenses, kind of working our way through our lineup of lenses. Today I've got the Lumix 35 to 100 2.8 zoom lens for micro four thirds. Uh, and this is easily one of my go-to favorite lenses for micro four thirds. I've got lots of photographs and inspirations pulled up to share, so stay tuned. <laughs> So there's no question in my mind that the 35 to 100 from Lumix for micro four thirds is uh, one of the best lenses I've ever owned. Uh, I consider this a utility lens because it does a little bit of everything well. At 2.8, it opens up wide enough to uh, get some good low light photography. Uh, let me pull a close up here. It is optically stabilized as well. You can see you can turn o uh, OIS on and off here right on the camera lens if you wish to. Uh, and look at the size of this lens. We take this lens hood off and you really get a feel for the fact that this lens is remarkably small. It's a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent to a 70 to 200, yet it's dramatically smaller than a full frame 24 to 70 would be. And there is the go-to reason right there for thinking about micro four thirds when it comes to camera formats and what's best for you. It's an incredible travel lens. Let's dive over to B&H real quick. Take a look at the price point. Uh, it's coming in right at $1,100, uh, $1,097.99. Uh, we'll show more here, see if it's weather sealed. It is splash dust and free, free, freeze proof design. Uh, and this has an aperture range of 2.8 to f22. Uh, there are lots of reviews here. You can go check out, see what other people think about it. And let's get into some inspirations right away and just kind of share some ideas of how I use this lens as a professional photographer uh, and how I think about this lens because it is such a utility lens. Uh, here's a shot taken at a wedding. Uh, if you're following our re lens reviews, you'll see a lot of different photography from the same subjects, the same weddings, the same portraits, and all the different sessions that we do because we generally uh, take quite a few lenses to each of our assignments. And uh, this is one shot that uh, I enjoyed because I'm so far away from the guys, they're just kind of enjoying their time together. And this is one of the core reasons that I turn to this lens for wedding photography a lot, is the fact that I can work from a distance, be kind of a quiet observer, even during the portrait session, and give the guys or the couple or the subject free time to just kind of live in the moment and be themselves. So I love working with long lenses for that purpose a lot of times, uh, as you can see here. Let me uh, click on Lightroom so it'll allow us to move. Uh, this is his beautiful bride getting off of a bus uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, again, I'm using this lens working at a bit of a distance here too, kind of zooming in. Uh, and I enjoy that because especially with situations like this where somebody's getting off of a bus, there's generally busy riding on the bus. It's not all that beautiful to look at, but when we hone in on the subject from a distance, it kind of compresses all of that and allows us to focus on the subject instead of what's around us. Same thing here. Anytime we're in transit to a new location, I'd love to have this lens on the camera because again, I can work from a distance, just kind of zoom in on the moment allow them to be themselves and capture some beautiful kind of interaction with couples. Um, it, when it comes to wedding details, this is a great go-to lens as well because it, it's allowing you, this is a narrow um, floral vase here and it allows us to kind of focus in on those two specific subjects, foreground and background, two vases working in harmony together. So it's a great lens for kind of keeping out of the shot what you don't want to see and honing the viewer's attention exactly where you want them to look. Uh, the fall off of depth of field with this lens is really uh, interesting too. Let me click I, we can see where I'm at here. I'm zoomed all the way to 200 millimeter here, or I should say 100 millimeter, but it's a full frame equivalent of 200. And you can see that it, it, what it does is it focuses in on the subject itself being this front cupcake with the um, uh, signature on it, and it allows that fall off to kind of continue. And so it, I love how it, focuses the viewer's attention exactly where we want to look. Another reason to consider uh, kind of a longer lens like this. Um, this is their first dance. And I love the beautiful bokeh that this lens represents. It's a beautiful fall off. 
Anytime there are lights in the distance, they tend to have a very round, beautiful bokeh on it. And I really enjoy this lens from that perspective. You can see another angle here of the bride's father giving a toast. Uh, and I just love how those shimmering lights turn out really big and beautiful uh, when we work with this lens. Here I'm stepping back uh, as well, kind of honing in on a three up here. Uh, and this lens is great for that. So if you want to bring in the focal attention to the subject, like the shot of our father, or kind of do a two or three up, this lens allows you to have the freedom to think quickly, zoom in, zoom out, and make a lot of decisions, capture a lot of angles quickly. And that's the beauty of a long zoom lens. Um, here you can kind of see a sail from a sailboat in the distance, kind of breaking the edge of the sun there. Uh, just a beautiful close-up, silhouetting them with the sun right in the center as it's setting. Uh, love this lens for that type of pho photography as well. Um, this is kind of my go-to portrait lens more times than not when I'm thinking more traditionally. Uh, and especially when I'm doing full lengths. And so here you can see that I'm kind of shooting up on the subject. One of the reasons I adore the flip-out screen uh, on these Lumix Micro Four Thirds systems because I just keep it like this at all times and I'm just moving and I can kind of shoot from the hip, focus from the hip and just kind of capture the subject. So it just gives me freedom not to have to get down low, work quickly and get a lot done. A great example of, of that reason. Uh, I've talked about this before with other lenses. Consider focusing your lens a little bit different, choosing a different f-stop I should say and here's a prime example of that. I wanted to keep Bethesda Fountain in the distance. This is the cent in Central cent Center <laughs> Central Central Park and uh, this fountain's really beautiful, very iconic and so here we have our subject in the foreground. Now at f2.8 which I work at a lot of times um, that is going to be completely out of focus and I know we pay for our glass, we pay for that 2.8 aperture but look what happens when we go to f16, we keep it more in focus, it shows the place, not just the subject. It's a fun way to think about portraits and something I highly recommend. Here once again in Central Park, um, she's kind of up in the leaves here in the trees. You know, this is what I love about having a park like this in the city that we live in. It just gives us epic opportunities to be in the middle of nowhere if we want to share that perspective and yet be in the city at the same time. So gotta love that about Central Park. This is a great portrait lens in the photography studio. This is our uh, studio in Connecticut. And we painted one of the walls kind of a 50% gray, which is great because it's a go-to for just about anything we want to photograph. Keeps things very simple. We can keep it gray, make it black with ease. Uh, and a great example of how I use this lens every single day of my life in the photography studio itself. Stepping just outside of the studio, we have these beautiful wisteria vines in the spring. We have a week and a half, two week period that it's just purple from floor to ceiling and I love using this lens in that situation and just kind of you can see here kind of the fall off and beautiful gradation of that focal point coming from subject to background working really well. Same thing here kind of a close up but that's the beauty of it. We can work a little bit wider or close. A lot of options at our fingertips to do things quickly and get a lot of different looks quickly. Uh, in a recent lens review, I think it was the last one I did, it was, we were talking about, I believe, the 12 to 35 2.8. And I talked about how this shot with that lens was one of my favorites I took all year. But then I pull this up and I see the expression on the bride's face and I say, maybe this is my favorite lens for that particular moment. You know, what really matters in the moment is what you're seeing in the moment. And in that last shot that you can't see here, but you have to go back and see, uh, you see the, the filtration of the light through the trees and I was seeing it from a scenic perspective. This on a cloudy day, my eyes were focused more on saying, okay, well let's hone in on the expressions of the couple. And I think you just have to live in the moment and play those things by ear to decide. Because from this day, this is one of my favorite shots and it's done with the 35 to 100 instead of working wide. Um, and as the couple passed me, as you can see, same moment here. This is the view on the other side as they give each other a kiss. Again, working from the hip, keeping that camera really low, focusing from the hip, click, click, continually shooting uh, makes this really magical. And here, again, this is done with the 35 to 100. And I love how it just kind of compresses everything. Those huge, tall trees 
uh, from that distance come into focus really well and it really frames the subject beautifully. So this wedding is at St. Clement's Castle, a beautiful place on the Connecticut River. Uh, and I loved this shot as the couple are kind of walking across the grass here. You see the whole castle in the distance. But I couldn't decide, did I like this better or did I like it better in infrared? This is a Lumic G7 converted to infrared, both with the 35 to 100 millimeter lens. I generally roll with two cameras, one infrared converted G7, tiny light little camera to do some grab shots like this that are very ethereal and usually a G9 in my other hand happen to have two 35 to 100s working in conjunction this way, uh, but I just couldn't decide. What do you guys think? Do you like the, the color version? I think it's just her expression there that's so beautiful, just so elegant. But yeah, this is beautiful too. So tough call for me. Um, you've seen shots like this of this shoot before. This is for Charlie Fine Art Fashions. This is one of my skirt designs from the paintings that I make. And I shared shooting down with the 12 to 35 and you see the whole pool because this is a raft that will float subjects out with uh, into the pool with. But look what happens when we work with this. We don't even see the pool. This, this again, what f photographs say depend on what you keep in them and what you remove from them for subjects. And that's what's interesting about a photograph. And so here, removing the pool, focusing our energy in where we want the subject to look, focusing in on uh, seeing the scarf and the color harmony that's going on here. And that's where the 35 to 100 is just so beautiful. Um, this is a really busy environment. This is on the other side of the pool. Uh, and this again, Charlie Fine Art Fashion is one of my dress designs. But when you're in a busy situation, a long lens like this 35 to 100 comes in really handy because when you're in a busy situation, you want to hone your focus in on the subject. And that's what this does. Zooming in on your subject kind of compresses that background. Everything can still be present, but the focal point be precisely on your subject. It's kind of the beauty of this lens. Here, just another portrait on the front porch at the Connecticut studio. Uh, again, just love how it brings your attention where we want you to look. Uh, fantastic lens for that purpose. Uh, this is the photography studio in Connecticut as well. Uh, we have a huge wood pile out on the side here. And as you can see, the barn that's way off in the distance, I can't even express how far that barn is away. But I typically will stop down to an F8, F16, sometimes 22, depending on how much light I have, depending on how I'm seeing that day. Um, here I'm stopped to F9. And you can see it picks up the barn in the distance. And again, it's a lot of fun to think about not only foreground, but what's happening in the middle, what's happening in the distance, and try to create a composition that includes all of that rather than just one or the other. Here's another example of the sky at the studio in Connecticut. You can see it focuses us in on the muscles <laughs> and the sky here uh, of our subject and a little bit of flash added to all of these to showcase all of the structure of his muscles. Flash photography is really key for that, especially when you get outdoors and you're competing with the sun. Uh, but you can have great control if you do take the time to add some flash to that. Uh, just a grab shot. Um, you know, as I'm walking in wedding ceremonies, I just pay attention to everything. And the 35 to 100 is a beautiful lens for that. So I just, I'm looking down the pews. I saw one girl holding her hands kind of closed. A bouquet in the foreground here, just so pretty. And I just kind of brought that to life using this lens. Zooming in on it, I'm about 80 millimeter here. Uh, which would be a full frame 160 and just kind of shows you uh, what we do there. So when it comes to portraits at weddings, we're working quickly, we're trying to get expressions, we want to bring laughter into it, emotion. And I also think about what is this photograph used for? Now when I'm doing families, I typically try to do something a little bit more full length, but I always try to do something that's more close up. And why is that? Well, for one thing, this is probably gonna be printed five by seven for the uh, bride's parents and be on their mantle, or eight by 10 at most. In the album, it's really going to be a, if we do print it large, eight by 10, 11 by 14, it's just gonna be a beautiful, stunning photograph that encompasses the whole page. But close-ups during portraits, that's what people wanna see, their expressions, their emotions, especially when we're going to five by seven, typically for those types of framed photographs. So think about that. Uh, how is your photograph being used 
rather than just going out and shooting and coming back with what you come back with. Uh, this is again for Charlie Fine Art Fashions, kind of picking up some of the lifestyle of the brand. Uh, we create leggings as well for athletics and just kind of showcases kind of uh, the lifestyle of the brand here. But again, getting that camera low, we pick up the sh uh, reflection here, really adds beautiful touch. And I'm shooting all the way across a pool here. And so these longer lenses, uh, ideal for working, working completely across a pool. Um, here we're in New York City on a rooftop. Now, it's very easy in these situations for the, the city to get lost. And what we're trying to do here is create a statement of these subjects being in the city, but give a, a sense of strength and power as well, because these are Wall Street executives. And so we just wanna showcase the city really well and bring up the buildings in the background to be very large and very bold and strong as well, complementing uh, the pose of the subject. And longer lenses do this incredibly well because how far, we're considerable distance from the Empire State Building here on top of the Palace Hotel uh, in New York. And so this allows us to kind of frame that beautifully here, the Chrysler Building all the way uptown here and just kind of showcases the difference uh, in what a long lens can do for you on a rooftop to showcase that. Love this shot of, of um, uh, a photograph taken at celebrity party planner David Tutera's wedding. Uh, just kind of an elegant photograph. Again, full length. We're in a tight bar situations here. I'm actually all the way out to 35 millimeter, uh, but I love this lens for that. What I'm doing to pick up some of the glow in the room here is I'm dragging the shutter or keeping it open a little bit longer to a 40th of a second. And that allows the ambiance to kind of hit her dress and skin tone. Uh, but the 35 to 100, once again, same wedding here. Uh, couples typically, if they have somebody singing at their wedding or playing an instrument, a lot of times that may be a distant family member or friend, as is the case here. And so what we want to do is draw attention to that. But maybe I'm down low working the wedding ceremony, can't get up into the loft. That's where these come in beautifully handy. Zoom it out, you know, a little further and you're able to, you know, capture these moments. Here I'm at 44 millimeter, which would be an 88 millimeter full frame. Uh, so not that far, but again, it's a great go-to in that situation. Uh, same wedding, uh, David Tutera uh, and Joey Toth uh, at the Biltmore Millennium in Los Angeles. Uh, I just wanted to showcase this because what it shows you is I'm way in the back of the room. This is what it looks like at 35 millimeter as they give a speech to their guest, framing the cake to the left. They are way off in the distance uh, but focusing in on them. But look what happens. Here I'm at 100 millimeter. So you see what happens having a, a lens of this um, kind of focal length. It allows you to do the wide shots and kind of frame things creatively and do the close up very quickly, never changing lenses and opening up the doors to a lot of possibilities. Uh, this is a fashion shoot at a mansion in uh, Verona, Italy. This is one of my wife's photographs. Uh, 35 to 100, uh, what I love about it is if we find color harmony when we're in a situation, the, the best way to utilize is, is to focus on those three points. And so we have her dress with the same tonality as the door, with the same tonality as the chair, and uh, just kind of framing so we don't get any lines coming through her head here. But it, it's a perfect example of how this works really well in environmental portrait situations to bring those color harmonies together. This is a wedding in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, this is uh, the Newport Bridge kind of in the distance and really, really beautiful. Just love this kiss. Framing, getting so low that I literally have the camera in the grass. So that's one of the examples I wanna show. Again, flip out screen, zooming way in, and I can't look through the viewfinder because my camera, I'm trying to get this lens to have grass blades in the foreground to add some depth and, ca depth and character. Uh, and that's exactly what the 35 to 100 allows us to do. Uh, and you can see that here as an example. And as they get up and start to walk towards me, I'm just on the move. Again, shooting low, shooting from the hip. That's where that flip out screen is such a beautiful thing. One more example of using depth of field creatively. It, you know, this is um, at the Verrazano Bridge uh, that connects Staten Island engagement portrait session. And you can see Manhattan in the distance here. But at any other kind of aperture, I would lose the city in the distance. So here I'm at F11, ISO 800, 125th of a second at about 45 millimeter. 
And again, that F11 is bringing that city into focus. So when you get far away from cities, consider, or a subject that you think is important or iconic, consider upping that f-stop to be uh, something more like an f11, f16, and it'll bring out what's in the foreground and what's in the distance and tell the story a little bit more. Beautiful lens for wedding close-ups, doing details of makeup. This is phenomenal for, for videographers as well. I do a lot of video work and in these moments, this is a great go-to lens for that because it is image stabilized. Com you know, complement that with five axis inside and you can hand hold this long lens beautifully uh, anytime you need to. Um, Star Jones wedding as they uh, are, are exchanging rings. We photographed her wedding on a cruise ship for seven days. And this is just one last example of how I love this lens because I, I see things sometimes just kind of drifting through, fleeting little things that I think are beautiful details. Uh, and here, just as the waiter came by, I'm like, oh, that, the color harmony, boom, 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 shooting from the hip, working this little flip out screen once again, but the 35 to 100 is great for those things where you're way away from your subject, but things just start to kind of flow and appear in the foreground sometimes that, cre that create these beautiful storytelling details in their album, kind of an example of that. So. Uh, that said, that's a 35 to 100. That's how I see it. That's how I use it, how I think about it. It's the, it's one of the top three lenses I would say definitely get if you're looking into lenses. Uh, the 12 to 35, 2.8, number one. 35 to 100, number two. Then you want to have a prime, at least a prime of maybe a 25 millimeter or 42.5, 1.7 or 1.2. Either one of those are a great go-to. Um, for those extreme low light situations that you find yourself in. Uh, quick thing here, I'm going to be giving a program, it turns out, uh, at WPPI, I just learned. I'm actually going to be uh, a Lumix ambassador out at WPPI working in the Lumix booth, which I'll be sharing uh, lots of photography and a little talk there. But I'm also going to be doing a photo walk, uh, which we don't usually get to do. And I'm excited about it because we're going to have a model we're gonna teach posing, lighting for weddings and environmental portraits. It should be a lot of fun. Make sure to sign up. Uh, I'll put the details below once I know more about it, but uh, looking forward to giving that program coming up as well. And with that said, I'm, that's a wrap for today. Uh, any questions you have, certainly reach out and subscribe if you would. Appreciate you everybody. Have a great one. Take care.